Hi guys, I'm Bob from HawkedWorkHardware.com and this is our Universal MIDI encoder. It comes in two parts, the encoder itself and the interface board and today I'm going to give you a quick run through of what it is, what it does and how you can use it to make your own HawkedWork MIDI console. If you're watching this, you probably already know that Hawkwork is a piece of software from Milan Digital Audio which runs on a PC or a Mac and allows you to play sample sets from fine organs from around the world. It's controlled by MIDI data from physical devices like keyboards, pedals, swell shoes, stops, etc. Each one of these sending unique MIDI data to the Hawkwork PC each time it's operated. Our Universal MIDI encoder monitors the keyboards, stops, pedals, etc. and generates the MIDI data which it sends to the Hawkwork PC, which then plays the required sounds. So, generally speaking, organs have two or more keyboards, which you use to play the notes with your hands, one pedal board, which you use to play the notes with your feet, one or more expression pedals, such as swell pedals, crescendo pedals, and so on, and stops, which you use to select which ranks of pipes will sound when you play a note or a pedal. And all of these things are required to provide you, the organist, with an acceptable playing experience. So what are the options to control or play a Hawkwork organ? Well, you could simply plug in a MIDI keyboard to the Hawkwork PC and play it. But that's just one keyboard, so it would produce some sound, but it would be very limiting. A bit like trying to fly an aeroplane using just a car steering wheel. You might point it in the right direction, but overall it wouldn't be a nice experience. So how do you get your hands and feet on all the controls needed to play a Hawkwork organ? Basically, there are four options. The first option is to buy a ready-made MIDI organ console with all the keyboards, pedal boards, expression pedals, stops and so on, all ready to go. You simply plug it into your Hawkwork PC and play. Obviously, this is the ideal scenario, but it will cost you four or five figures to buy a new one. The second option, if you're a practical sort of person, is that you can build your own console from scratch, either using new or second-hand parts. This is much cheaper, and you can obviously make it to suit your exact requirements. The third option, if you don't feel confident or don't have the time and space to build a new console, is that you can convert an old organ to work with MIDI and Hawkwork. This is easier than it sounds, and probably the most economic and fastest method to get you playing Hawkwork. And you can buy these organs for next to nothing on eBay, and then convert them. Finally, if you don't have any practical skills, you can buy a ready converted organ and these are usually available from us via our website. These are considerably cheaper than a new console. And for options 2, 3 and 4, it's our universal MIDI encoder that makes it all possible. It's universal because you can have any combination of keyboards, pedals, stops, expression shoes and so on. And these can all be of different makes and styles and designs. But basically, whatever you've got, you can use. For example, you could have two 5 octave keyboards, one 32 note pedal board, along with a swell shoe, a crescendo pedal and a hundred stops. Or you could have five keyboards, full pedal board, seven expression pedals and 50 stops. You simply plug the encoder into a PC and tell it what you've connected. And after that, it just works. Simple. So as you can see, by connecting one of our encoders to whatever keyboards, pedals, switches, etc. you may have put in your console, then simply plugging the encoder into a USB port on your PC and telling it via the simple menu system, which I'll show you shortly, you can be up and running in no time. It really is that simple. But, I hear you say, there must be complicated wiring diagrams to follow to connect it all together. Not at all. It really is simple. Let me show you. The encoder has only got 12 inputs, and by some strange coincidence, there are only 12 notes in an octave. It was a stroke of luck, that. So to wire it up, all you have to do is connect the 12 notes from the keys to the 12 inputs on the encoder. 
Keyboards always have a common line which connects to one side of all the notes, and a line connected to each key, usually with a diode, that's the arrow shaped thing in the picture. And most keyboards have one common line for each octave, and the common line connects to one of the scan ports on the encoder. OK, simple, but my keyboard's got more than one octave. That's not a problem. You just connect all the same note keys together and use a separate scan port for each common line, one per octave. So five octaves would be five common lines. Now stops work in exactly the same way. One common line for every 12 stops. And don't forget the diodes. Expression pedals connect to the other side of the board. These are analogue devices. They provide a signal that's proportional to their position. In other words, a swell pedal fully up would equal 5 volts possibly, and fully down would equal 0 volts. And any position in between would equal some voltage in between. And that's all there is to it. So as you can see, wiring it up is really simple. Obviously, there are lots and lots of wires because there are lots and lots of keys. But it's not complicated, it's just repetitive. Oh, and by the way, if you mess up when you're wiring it, and you have shorts in your wiring, the encoder will tell you which wires are shorted, and let you sort it out before you start. So you're not left wondering why it doesn't work. So, let's take a look at how we set it all up with a PC. Just plug in a USB lead between the encoder and a spare USB port on your PC. I should mention that you'll have to load the drivers for it the first time you connect it to your PC, but that's easy enough to do, and it's covered in the instruction manual, so I won't go into it in the video. OK, so we use a terminal program to uh, communicate with our encoder. I use a program called Putty. Uh, it's free, it works really well, uh, and there's a link to it on our website from, from the support page downloads and then there's this link here says link to putty download page you can click on that that'll take you to the putty website where you can download putty for free uh, and that just works so i've already got it on this computer and i've already plugged in our encoder and it says straight away the encoder is not configured yet and that midi operation is not possible until it is configured so press enter for menu so that's the main menu that you see when you connect to the um, Universal MIDI encoder. There are seven menu options. Number one, display current config. Uh, obviously, it's not been configured yet, so if we do that, it tell, tells us that there isn't anything to show us. Number two is where we configure our keyboards and pedal board. Number three is for configuring the stops. Number four for the expression pedals. And number five is where we can check the wiring for shorts. That's probably a good one to start with. We press number five. And it comes back and tells us all OK, no pins shorted. Um, just to show you what happens, though, if I short a couple of pins together on this one on purpose, uh, and we do that again, number 5. OK, so now you can see that the results pin 5 is shorted to 6, and pin 6 is shorted to 5. Press Enter to continue. So you would need to fix that, first of all. Um, and then once that's fixed, which it now is, all OK, no pins shorted, then you're good to go um, with the rest of it. Number six is the factory reset. So if you've done something wrong or if you're putting it in a different organ and you just want to clear all the configuration out and start from scratch, that's the one to go for. And number seven, exit configurator and resume MIDI operations. So it's fairly obvious what that does. Um, just to uh, make it absolutely clear in case anyone's a bit confused by this, because I know uh, we're showing this, you know, connecting it to the computer with the USB cable for this. We're showing connecting it to the Hortwork computer with MIDI cable and so on. Um, this configuration using the USB cable only needs to be done the first time you um, connect the thing to your organ. This is where you tell it all the different parts that are connected to it so it knows what to do and how to work. Once this is done, um, you can unplug it from your laptop or computer or whatever you're using to configure it with, um, and then you would only use a MIDI cable to connect it to your Hawkwork PC uh, or your synthesizer or whatever else you're going to use it to drive. So just to be clear, this part of it is just at the very beginning. So we'll take a quick look um, at how easy it is to configure the keyboards and pedal boards. I won't go through all these options because um, they're, they're fairly obvious and, and they're all very similar. Um, but we'll just quickly go through configuring a keyboard. So if we go into number two, it asks us how many keyboards or manuals do we have, including pedals. You can have a maximum of seven keyboards in your organ. We'll just do one. Um, all existing configs will be erased. Yes, that's okay. 
Okay, first question, how many octave pins will be used for this keyboard? So you remember we said that uh, each octave line connects to um, a separate pin on the encoder. Uh, so let's just say we've got a small keyboard with three pins. So we tell it number three. What is the lowest octave number for the keyboard? Um, MIDI supports ten octaves, numbered zero through nine. Middle C is in octave number five, obviously, probably. Um, and ours starts, uh, let's say it starts one octave below that. So we'll say octave number four is the lowest octave. What is the lowest note for the keyboard? So let's say that the keyboard starts on C. Uh, the reason this one's here is that they don't always start on C. Some of the Yamaha keyboards have a habit of starting on um, F. Uh, some of them start on G. So you would still connect that lowest note to the um, the, the lowest um, note input pin on the encoder. Uh, but you would just tell it here that it started on, um, you know, number two, for example, if it starts on D. But in our case, we'll put zero. Then it asks us about the diodes. Do they face away from or towards the common lines on the keyboards? Uh, ours face away. Uh, you can have them facing in either direction. It doesn't matter. Uh, so you can have one keyboard with them facing towards. You can have one keyboard with them facing away. What you can't have is one keyboard with some of them facing towards and some of them facing away. That won't work. But you can mix and match keyboards. doesn't matter which direction they're in as long as we tell the encoder the right one. And then it asks us which MIDI channel do we want to use for this keyboard? Well, we'll just use channel one. And then it asks us for the pin numbers that the octave lines are connected to. So I've just used 15, 16, and 17. And that's all it wants to know. So it then takes us back to the main menu. If we now press number one to play current config, um, it shows us what we've just configured for that keyboard. Uh, it also shows us that there are no sets of stops configured yet, no expression pedals and invites us to press enter to continue. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So, I hope you found that useful and interesting. Do visit the website. It's www.hawptworkhardware.com. There are usually some pre-built MIDI consoles for sale on the website. And of course you can buy the encoder and the interface board that we've seen today. The interface board is also available as a kit of parts. If you're a bit of a whiz with a soldering iron, you can buy it as, uh, as a circuit board and parts, and you have to solder the parts onto the board. Um, it's about half price to do it that way, uh, simply because it takes us time to put them together. There's a how-to step-by-step DVD for sale on the website as well, which is based around the Wyvern Exeter organ, which is two manuals, one pedal board, and one spell swell pedal with 43 stops. And there's a step-by-step -step guide into exactly what was required to convert that into a fully functional MIDI console for Hulk to work. Uh, and of course our contact details are on the website as well. So good luck with your Hulk to work project. And until next time, I'm Bob for HawkedWorkHardware.com.